On the part of the House of Representatives, the joint session is called to order. Please rise for the nation's prayer. Amang mapangyarihan, mapagkalingang Panginoon, may, may gawa ng langit at ng lupa. Pinapupurihan namin ang iyong kadakilaan, inyong pagmamahal sa amin. Luwalhatiin ang iyong pangalan sa pagsanggalang sa amin, ng aming harapin mga hidwaan sa lipunan at mga unos ng kalikasan. Hanggang kami ay inyong itinaas, sa aming pagkalugmok, binigyan ng bagong karangalan, pamana sa mga henerasyong darating. Sa po namin ang iyong kapatawaran, sa mga kasalanan at pagkukulang, inyong awa ay igawad po sa amin, kung isinasantabi ang katotohanan at kalagayan ng mga mahihirap at mga naaapi. Pinalala ng aming pagmamalabis o pagwawalang bahala. Abigo ang magmahal ayon sa iyong katuroan. Tanggapin aming taos-pusong pasasalamat sa inyong patnubay nang tahakin namin ang landas ng kalayaan mula sa kadena ng kahirapan at pagkakawatak-watak. Pag-isahin po ninyo aming bayan sa gitna ng aming pagkakaiba-iba, idulot po ninyo ang inaasam na kapayapaan at kasaganahan. Basbasan ninyo aming pambansang pamunuan, mga kinatawan ng serbisyo sibil, aming hukong sandatahan, tagapagpangalaga at ng kapayapaan, ng ang alab at sagisag ng pagkamakabayan, at mapagsakripisyo ay patuloy na lumukob sa kanila higit na magsilbi ng may dangal at pagtalima sa inyong kalooban. Inyong, inyong mga pagpapala, may, may kaangibat na pagtugon, pagtugon maging responsabling tagapangasiwa ng inyong nilikhang sandibutan. Hubugin ang aming bayan na maging maunlad tapat at nagtitiwala sa inyong walang humpay na pagmamahal. Amen. Please uh, remain standing for the singing of the Philippine National Anthem to be led by Mr. Armin Ferrer. Dagat at bundok sa simula Sa langit mong gutaw May dilag ang tula At awit sa paglayang minamahal Ang kislap ng wataw At mo'y tagumpay na nagbinimbing Ang bituin at araw niya Kailan pa may di magsidibim Lupa ng araw
Your Excellencies, members of the House of Congress, ladies and gentlemen, the President of the Republic of the Philippines, Rodrigo Roa Duterte. Thank you. Uh, can you sit down? Kumusta po kayo? Senate President Vicente Soto III and the Honorable Members of the Senate, House Speaker Alan Peter Cayetano and the Honorable Members of the House of Representatives. Vice President Maria Leonor Robredo, magandang hapon po sa inyong sa iyong ma'am. At kung nasa angga. <laughs> Former Presidents Fidel V. Ramos, Joseph Hercito, <laughs> Makapagal Arroyo, His Excellency Katcha and his team members of the Diplomatic Corps. Executive Secretary Salvador Midaldia and the other members of the Cabinet. Chief Justice Lucas Bersamin and the Supreme Court. My fellow workers in government, mga mahal kong kababayan. Let me begin by extending my hand in gratitude to all who kept faith with me in our most trying times. Numbers speak a thousand words, tell a hundred tales, but the landslide victory of the administration candidates as well as the latest survey result shows that my disapproval rating is 3%. I hope that the members of Congress, sana hindi kayo included sa 3%, inspires me with determination to pursue relentlessly what we have started at the start of my administration. Few men imbued with the will and the courage to do what he believes is right, unjust, and whatever be the opposition in terms of numbers and noise makes a majority. For it is not the eagle in the fight, but the fight in the eagle that matters. <laughs> Believe me, I will end my term fighting. It has been three years since I took my oath of office, and it pains me to say that we have not learned our lesson. The illegal drug problem persists. Corruption continues, and emasculate the courage we need to sustain our moral recovery initiatives. Years ago, we saw the terrible devastation caused by illegal drugs. On May 23, 2017, our law enforcers launched an operation to serve a warrant 
and to neutralize terrorists. A group of armed men with sophisticated weaponry and aided by local radicalized by extreme dogma and teachings fought our troops for weeks. During that Marawi siege, tons of shabu worth millions and millions of pesos. Drug money killed 175 and wounded 2,000 and one of my soldiers and policemen in that five-month battle. I am aware that we still have a long way to go in our fight against this social menace. Let the reason why I advocate the imposition of the death penalty for crimes related to illegal drugs. Our citizens have begun to do their part in the war against drugs and through the barangay formation of anti-drug councils and also actually surrendering bricks of cocaine found floating in the sea into our islands. I call this responsibility. However, the drugs will not be crossed unless we continue to eliminate corruption that allows the social monster to survive. I respectfully request Congress to reinstate the death penalty for heinous crimes related to drugs as well as plunder. My countrymen, it is a sad commentary that we cannot distinguish our need from our greed, our principles from our prejudices, the real from the fake, and the truth from a lie. The reason is because that many of us, what matters above all is the self. It is selfishness, it's worse for no purpose other than personal aggrandizement. To borrow the language of F. Chanel, who say, we have not risen above the beyond, and beyond the parochial interest. Our warp loyalty to family, friends, and tribal kin continue to exact a heavy toll on our programs designed to uplift the poor and reassure our investors, our foreign investors, local, and the business sector in this country. The recent uncovering of the massive fraud perpetrated against the public health insurance system proves that corruption is pervasive. Huge amount of medical funds were released to cover padded medical claims and imaginary treatment of ghost patients. I am grossly disappointed. The government is conned of millions of pesos which could be used to treat illnesses and possibly save the lives of many. Thus, I ordered the NBI to arrest and cause the prosecution of those liable. I appointed a new field health president, whom I know is a man of integrity, a military man, a former military officer, and gave him marching orders to prioritize reading the agency of corruption. By the way, I commend the Bureau of Investigation 
for its handling of high-profile cases resulting in the arrest and prosecution of criminals. These culprits will have their day of reckoning in court. I hope it happens during the last three years of my term. Concerning the scrupulous persons manning our ports and scalawags in uniform, we have been unyielding in our reforms to weed them out of public service. I have fired or caused the resignation of more than a hundred officials and appointees of government without regard to relationship, friendship, and alliance. There is no sacred cow, as the saying goes, in my administration. Institutions that are the stewards of our resources and agents of development have long been a major source of public frustration. Drastic reforms within these agencies have yielded results. Our government-owned and controlled corporations, infamous for high salaries and bonuses, being, being paid for their executives and employees, have started to shape up. As of July 9, 2019, we collected more than 61 billion from GOCCs or government corporations, 32 of which, or 16, 32% is 16 billion from PAGCOR. This is more than the 36 billion collected in 2017. My salute to Andrea Domingo. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Magpasugal ka pa ng marami. Bureau of Customs, though corruption-ridden, managed to collect 500 85 billion pesos in 2018. Imagine how much more could have been collected had the BOC been clean and less corrupt. May I cut and just magsalita lang ako kung anong sa isip ko. I went to the Bureau of Customs uh, two weeks ago and found out that there are about 63 of them facing charges, criminal charges, and 61 of them under investigation. I hope that I can have the cooperation of Congress. If we cannot abolish their position, and if I cannot dismiss them for the reason that there is a security of tenure, I will just allow them to have their plantilla positions, but they have to report to Congress every day to help me in the huge uh, paperwork that we have to do every day. All of them will go out from the premises of the customs area. I do not want them back. We in government talk too much act too little and too slow. I recall saying that before the congressional hearing when I was mayor of Davao City. I said that again to emphasize how little we have changed since then. We have long on rhetorics but short of accomplishments. It's just that you, Congress, or America, even the executive department, and maybe me. So I am here to rectify my own error. That is why I implore those who occupy positions of power and authority to let your deeds and accomplishments do the talking, 
lead by example, words ring hollow when not followed by positive and prioritized action. Time and again, I have emphasized that, like my fellow workers in government, trabahante lang po ako ng Pilipino. Last year, I, assi I signed the Ease of Doing Business, an Efficient Government Service Delivery Act, a significant piece of legislation to improve service delivery and fight corruption still until now. However much is to be done in ensuring our responsiveness to the people's needs, based on complaints received by this contact center, Bayan, contact center Bayan, that's in my office, the LTO, SSS, BIR, LRA, and Pag-ibig are the top five agencies that need to drastically improve their service. I reiterate my government, uh, my directive to the government and in instrumentalities, including the LGUs and the government corporations. Simplify. May I... Andito ba kayo? Simplify. Just like the others. You can do it electronically. You do not have to go to the office. I've been asking that from you since three years ago. Pag hindi pa rin yung nagawa yan ngayon, papatayin ko talaga kayo. Nabubwisit na. Simplify and make your services responsive to client-friendly. Your client is the Filipino, our employer. From where the money in our pockets come from, from our salaries. Thanks to Executive Secretary Mijaldia, we have increased the number of lines from hotline 8888 to make it more responsive to the public. Our ultimate goal is for our people to be freed from using these hotlines because government service and response have marked improved. Again, I will. Ang problema kasi ng Pilipino. I'm addressing now to the Filipino. Kayo ring kasi. Sinasabi ko na sa inyo, be assertive. At pag ikayo o ikaw hiningian, more than the required payment by government at humigi pa sa iyo, I've been telling you, mag-iskandalo kayo sa opisina. Make a scene. Sampaliboy ang pina na yan. Kasi aabot rin sa akin yan. And I have done that. Ako magprangka ako sa inyo. Ako lang ang presidente na hanggang ngayon nagbubugbog talaga ng tao. Yan sa loob ng mula kanyan. Pinapakain ko ng pera yung mga yawa na yan. Igalit na ako sa inyo eh. Kindly be assertive. Pagkahiningian ka, sabihin mo, Ida mo, sabi ni Duterte, the president told us, that if you extort money from me, I will slap you. At sampalin talaga ninyo. Di na bali magkaaway, I will defend you. At kung maari, and this is what I've been doing all along, there's an 888. Be sure that it is true. Though you are not liable for libel, pero wag naman yung makasakit ka ng kapwa tao na wala namang kasalanan. 888 then place to President Duterte re-abuses by director asking for money. Text mo, lalabas yan dyan. 
And that is for the public to view. At kung totoo, Malacan yan, I said, is open 24 hours. 24 hours, basta corruption. And that is why that fiasco about the frigate ni Trillanes was because yung Koreano na napagbili ng barko who sold the ship to the Philippine government, wala pa hong delivery. And it was there already ready. And that is why that Korean went to Malacanian just to complain. Why is it that there is no request for delivery? So I told Bong, Bong, ayusin mo yan. He went to Laura, Lorenzana and Lorenzana nagsulat siya. May nakakuha because sa Malacanian, every administration may tao yan dyan. Every administration leaves some of the men because they are appointed on plantilla position. He kinuha nila, then it was brought here before the Congress. And so Bong was called to testify and said, he was assured, it will be a closed door. So I told Bong, no, ask for an open and public hearing. Sabi ko, sabihin mo sa lahat, kanina, wala, wala, you have nothing, just say the truth. Sabi ko, pagkatapos niya testify, sabi ko, Bong, maniwala ka hindi, you will be a senator. Totoo yan. That is the story of how convoluted politics and corruption here in our country works. Equipped with political will, the government ordered the closure of Boracay Island for six months to prevent its further deterioration. We cleaned and rehabilitated the island and not allowed it to heal naturally. I am proud to say that it has been restored close to its original pristine state. Boracay Interagency Task Force led by Secretary Simato and fully supported by Secretaries Andio, Romulo Puyat, Oh, what's her name? For uh, surname ito, Romulo Puyat. Oh, what's her name? Ah, si ah, Berna. Ah, Berna Romulo Puyat, Belo and Villar, and the Tesla Chief Mamunjong for this huge success. Kodos are also due to the PMS for integrating the six-month rehabilitation plan and the NEDA for the recently approved Mindanao term Boragay Action Plan. Boragay Island is just the beginning. And the girls there, the foreigners, are waiting for you, gentlemen, to visit the place. They are all on the beach uh, sunbathing. Uh, you are uh, invited. To, I have not been there. Alamo. Nung naayos yan, uh, day before, we were told that there's going to be an opening tomorrow. So on the TV on that day, magandang hapon, showed a lot of buntings and banners, Salamat, Duterte, ano mapagkatao. So when I saw it, I called the military and the police, remove the buntings. I am not going there. No need to really arbit, arbit, uh, uh, advertise. I am paid for what I'm doing. Nakokornihan ako. Too much adulation, bordering pretensions. I can always smell it a mile away. And I, ne I never went there until now. What I did was, I went to the other side of the island and uh, as the Dar, what is the status of the land behind the beach of Boracay? And they are still categorized as forestal and agriculture. Not, I said, not commercial, no, sir. 
So I told the agrarian reform, go to the place, have it inspected. Because I will declare the whole of the island a land reform program. And I gave the islands piece by piece to the Etas, the natives of the place. Para walang masabi. Marami kasi ginawa ko raw, para linisan ko, ibigay ko sa mga kaibigan ko, wala akong kaibigang mayaman. Ayaw kong kaibigan ng mayaman. Because pagka mayaman ka, tatabi lang ka lang, ka lang sa akin, pati ako, napahira na ng kung ano-ano ang hingiin mo sa gobyerno. There are those who violate environmental rules. I am giving due notice to the LGUs and other stakeholders, kayo po, uh, of tourist destinations to take extra steps in the enforcement of our laws and the protection of our environment. On January 27, 2019, we officially started the Manila Bay Rehabilitation. Though we have a long way to go, we are encouraged by the test results of the waters near Padre Faura. We will relocate informal shelters. I hope it can happen during my time. Along the waterways and shut down establishments that continue to pollute and poison our waters. Make a choice. I'm going to the... Malaki ba yung building dyan? I'm going to dismantle your burning, building or just simply burn it down so that we can have a new setup of environmental, friendly, whatever that needs. So the build, build, build program in emerging economic hubs outside Metro Manila, this will simply gain ground thanks to the efforts of the economic team led by Secretary Dominguez. Uh, hard at work in the interconnection of our islands and cities by air, land, and sea, our secretaries to Gladi and Villar. Alaman naman naman ninyo. Magaganda na ang airport ninyo. Inuna ko nga kayo. Everybody's complaining about the Davao airport. And I said, Davao will be the last. Kung hindi na maabutan, sabi ko mga taga-Davao, pasensya na kayo. Para walang masabi ang Congress sa atin, baka nga 3% sila doon sa kabila. We also paved the way for the entry of third telecommunication provider. Do not worry about this. There is no corruption at all. I guarantee you, upon the grave of my father, I do not allow, I do not talk to them. I just say, just do your work. And kung maari, according to what the specifications are required by this government. I challenge this new player to fulfill its commitment to provide fast and reliable telecommunication services to our people, especially in the underserved areas. DICT Secretary Hunasan will be the lead man in this endeavor. I hope he is here. <laughs> However, developmental gains will not be felt by our people in the countryside if we cannot maintain law and order. Young peace and security, we need to enforce the law. After almost two decades of peace negotiation, the Bangsamoro Organic Law was finally passed and ratified. For decades, our Muslim brothers in the arm have been mired in poverty. My late Muslim brother, Minda Chair Abdul Gair Alonto, envisioned a progressive, peaceful, and united Mindanao during our lifetime. It is my hope 
that the Bangsamoro transition will fast track the establishment of regional government that will secure and comfortable life for Muslim brothers and sisters and all indigenous communities in the Bangsamoro regions. Additionally, I have to take the helm of the National Task Force to end local communist armed conflict and have assigned a cabinet member to each region to harmonize government efforts in attaining national de develop development security. Through the exceptional leadership of Secretary Briones and the DepEd, I am proud to say that this year more Filipino learners are receiving basic education with over 27 million enrollees from kinder to senior high school. And because we have still a little to spare, the fastest population growth, one of the, is the Philippines. We are so industrious that we are producing more people than I do not want to quarrel with uh, the religious, but uh, more than eight, 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 uh, 823. Sorry, but I see not good for the out of goal youth and adult learners were able to access non formal education to the alternative means of learning skills to achieve their goals. Thank you. 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 86,000 micro, small, and medium enterprises, or the MSMEs, have received over $3 billion worth of loans since 2017, thanks to the efforts of Secretary Lopez and the DTI. Additional benefits for solo parents, the assignment of health workers in all barangays, and the expansion of the Malasakit centers are what we also hope to achieve through the bills filed by the original concept of bongo para manalo sa kampanya. Yun ang mantra niya. Totohanin mo lang bong, mapahiya tayong lahat. I also implore Congress, it, you, look, uh, you, have, you have to study this very carefully. Congress has to postpone the May 2020 election. And the barangay sangganian kabataan to October 2022. Because if you read it, this, uh, it to rectify the truncated terms, pa iba iba na eh. The truncated terms of sitting barangays, but also provide them with the ample time to finish the programs and projects. I suggest Congress should also enact the Magna Carta for barangays. This administration's malasakit at servicio program has, of course, reached the Filipinos who labor in foreign lands. The milestone signing of the bilateral labor agreement with Kuwait in 2018 is a testament of my commitment to stop abuses inflicted on our overseas Filipinos, to ensure their welfare protection and their access to government services, the establishment of the Department of Overseas Filipinos will sufficiently address this particular need.
our accomplishments for the past three years and the plans for the next three are discussed in detail in my midterm report to the people, copies of which shall be available before the day ends. Let me repeat what I said many times before. Honestly, I have identified the enemy who dump us into this quagmire we are in. I have met the enemy face to face and suddenly the enemy is us. We are our own tormentors addressing the Filipino people. We are our own demons. We are as rap rapacious predators preying on the helpless, the weak, and the voiceless. We find corruption everywhere in government when every malefactor watching his cohorts back in blatant disregard of his oath when he assumed public office. Even the language has evolved to soften the wickedness of the criminal act. For the boys, sponsoring an event, or what else have you? No amount of euphemism can trivialize or normalize betrayal of public trust or any other criminal offense. It is an injury laced with insult. It is both a national embarrassment and a national shame. For every transaction a commission. For every action extortion. Any request that goes on and on endlessly and shamelessly. Catharsis is what we individually and collectively need to do today. Not tomorrow, but today. self purgation followed by the resolve to do what is right and proper is good for the nation's health. Let me ask you, when will corruption end? Kailan ba talaga ito hanggang kailan? Well, I don't know. I've been in with government for almost 35 years now. I'm not singling out myself. It's the entire gamut of our system. Corruption exasperates. It frustrates. It is also exasperating that there are times when I think that perhaps it is blood that we need to cleanse and rinse away. The dirt and the muck that stick to the flesh like leeches. Of course, it is only a thought. I am simply thinking aloud to dispel any controversy that my statements in this regard will create something else. Words of Pedro Guerrero who said, Sometimes they write what I say. And they write, and, uh, they write what I say and not what I mean. So yung mga papurga-purga lang yan. I use similes, metaphors, hyperbole, and other figures of speech every now and then to prove or stress a point. I am as human as anybody else. On the matter of the Philippine West Philippine Sea, 
the avoidance of conflict, armed conflict, and protection of our territorial waters and natural resources compel us to perform a delicate balancing act. A shooting war is grief and misery multiplier. War leaves widows and orphans in its way. I am not ready or inclined to accept the occurrence of more destruction, more widows and more orphans should war, even on a limited scale, breaks out. More and better results can be reached in the privacy of a conference room than in the squabble and a squabble in the public. That is why I will do in the peaceful way, mindful of the fact that it is a national pride and territorial integrity that are at stake. Short of expressly advocating a call to arms, there are those who say that we should stand up and stop those who fish in our economic zone. Of course, we will do in due time. There is, alam mo ganito yan eh. Noong, when I became president, and when the M16 rifles were uh, cancelled by America upon the prodding of the U.S. Congress, I found myself in a quandary because reports were already very ripe na there was the passing of arms in Marawi. And because of the arms were already mostly in the hands of the police, hands me down from the army, were quite old. And sometimes the vault that pushes the bullet flies out and the barrel has really become loose and there are no more lands and means to push it into a circular trajectory to maintain its accuracy. So I was forced to go to China. Then in China, we had a bilateral. I brought along the military man, Anyo, the chief of staff then, and all of them, Lorenzana, Esperon, national security. In that meeting, I said, cabinet members were there, I want to go to my territory to dig oil. That's the word, word. I dig. Because that is ours. Ang sabi ni President Xi, well, you know, there's a conflict there. Do you think uh, rather than go there and have a confrontation, not necessarily uh, the great ships, worship. But, you know, a squabble there could lead to something else. So, you know, we just became friends. And perhaps uh, we can talk about this. But not an outright precipitate move. Because, you see, it's softly. It can mean trouble. If the trouble, the trouble comes out from the mouth of a president, of a republic. Anong magawa mo? So, what did they answer? Well, then maybe, sir, we can uh, talk about this at some other time. But definitely, before I go, we must talk about the West Philippine Sea. We cannot, you know, have our cake and eat it too in this. You know, I cannot go there even to bring the Coast Guard to drive them away. China also claims the property and he is in possession. Yan ang problema. Sila yung in possession and claiming all the resources there as an owner. We are claiming the same, but we are not in the position because of that fiasco. Noong dalawang nag-stand of the own, 
during the time of my predecessor, si Albert Ambassador, if I'm correct, I do not know his real name, tayo ang umatras. Pagsabi na umatras, that was a kind of a compromise. Tayo ang umatras. Nung umatras tayo, pumasok sila. Marami na. That day, we lost this Pratli and the Panganiban. Yan, ang totoo. Walang bulahan yan. Ngayon, may arbitra ruling. I, I said, I could not even ask for the oil, claiming the entire resources of the Muna. Anong sabihin ko sa kanila? Kaya sinabi ko, let us do this mutually. Of course, when she says, I will fish, who can prevent him? And sabi ko naman, we will fish because we claim it. And sabi ko, please allow, because uh, before that, they were driving away our fishermen. Di ba, inaabog nila. Kaya sabi ko, do not drive them away because the Filipinos are of the belief that they are also the climate. Now, if you deprive, uh, deprive the Filipinos of uh, their... Magkagulo talaga yan. And it could lead to one, not really war. I said, we have to... Uh, sabi ko, so I, mean, I said, I allowed. That was on the premise that I own the property. Pero hindi tayo in control of the property. Yan, magsabi sila, of course, I will allow you. Kaya pinabalik. Yung disgrasya, yung pagsabi, a mere incident, a legal marine incident. Yan ang ginagamit sa batas, a marine incident happened. Hindi naman sinasabi, marine accident. It was just, uh, banggaan wala naman. So they wanted to talk. Tapos ayaw dito. And so, so, sige, we will investigate, and you investigate. And when we are ready, we should meet and compare notes. And let us determine who pays for what damage. Ganun lang. Ipadala ko yung marines ko to drive away the Chinese fishermen. I guarantee you, not one of them will come home alive. Kung ipadala ko yung limang pati yung frigate ko na bago, yung pinagkaguluhan nila ni Trillanes dyan sa that made bong uh, senator. Ubus yan. Because there are already guided missiles in that island. And the fastest that they have installed there can reach Manila in seven minutes. You want war? Alam mo, asaran yan eh. Supladuhan yan. Kung supladuhan lang, nguran ang putang, umalis ka dyan. Kung ganunan lang, bright ako dyan. Hanggang bunga nga lang. Pero kung bunutan na ng baril, ah, pwede siguro. Basta dalawa lang. But the problem is, ah, there, whether we do it in, in a diplomatic way, there will be heated arguments. Sigurado yan. We do it in a confrontation doon, we try to drive them away, it could lead to a violence. In a way yan. By the way, the president answered when I said, I will dig my oil the first time I went to China. Nakita ko yung tao. So you can more or less... Uh, draw a profile of his uh, please do not do that because there will be trouble. Ano, ano man magawa ko? I go there, I said, the fisheries or uh, and besides, I was invoking yung traditional fishing rights. It is in that arbitrary ruling Ayaw lang ninyo gustong tignan. 
it is mentioned there that even before countries were in existence, people around an ocean or a lake had already been fishing there for generations. And that is why fishing rights are allowed in the so many cases between Finland and Germany, uh, decided by UNCLOS. UNCLOS is the international law of the seas. UNCLOS is a product of a treaty. That treaty is also a part of our land because we are a signatory. Dito, kung basahin lang ninyo yan ng husto, it is there. You might just say, oh, uh, poor China and everybody recognizes traditional fishing rights for the natives who were there even before the creation of republics and governments. That law is a human law. So I'm sorry I have to... I promised you 40 minutes. But I, you want me to start? Oh, we can go home now. I have exceeded my... There is, you know, there is a time for everything. Do not believe the others because they are not my friends. They are my political enemies. They say, I do not believe in God. Who says? I am a believer of a universal mind. But uh, I do not believe that a God so perfect would create hell for his creation. And what kind of God is he? He is not my God. There is a time to, for everything. A time to negotiate and a time to quarrel. With your enemy, with your uh, political opponents, with your wife. That is why uh, some lives here are uh, and a time to antagonize, and a time to make peace, and a time to go to war, and a time to live, and a time to die. That's Ecclesiastes 3. Our ownership of the Philippine, West Philippine Sea is internationally recognized. However, both the United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea, UNCLOS, and the Arbiter Award in the case of People, Republic of the Philippines versus People's Republic of China recognize instances where another state may utilize the resources found within the coastal states exclusive economic zone, the arbitrary ruling, even states, the one that they are charging me for violating the Constitution. Sino gana yun? Suntukin lang kita dyan ngayon, buti pa. Dito eh, the arbitrary, even states that the Philippines may enter into fishing agreements with other states provided certain conditions and requisites in the UNCLOS are met. So yung aking sabi niya, let's go fish. Sabi ko, you have to act, you know, they've been there fishing since time immemorial. I think it was Adam who got the first lapu-lapu there. Let me assure you that national honor and territorial integrity Shall, not, shall be foremost in our mind. And we may take next steps in the smoldering con controversy over the, the lines of arbitrary ruling. The West Philippine Sea is ours. There is no ifs and buts. It is ours, but we have been acting <laughs> along that legal truth and line. But we have to temper it with the times and the realities that we face today. Poverty incidence fell from 27.6% in the first half of 2015 to 21% in the first half of 2018. The most important number, though, is the 6 million Filipinos we need to pull out 
from poverty. Kindly help me on this. And you know, as I said, corruption is everywhere. You are free to investigate. I don't take offense. If there is anything wrong in my department, the executive, you are free to open the investigation anytime. You do not have to call me. Call the idiots, expose them, and send them to jail. You are helping. Do not be, I am not, uh, I've been a prosecutor. I know how it works. Feel free. Feel free to expose anything that is not in accordance with law. We have pursued tax reforms to fund our poverty reduction programs. I therefore implore Congress to immediately pass package two of the comprehensive tax reform program or the Trabajo Bill, which shall gradually lower the income, corporate income tax and rationalize the unimproved fiscal incentives. It will energize our MSMEs and encourage them to expand their business and hopefully generate, hopefully, I'm, young, I'm missing the words hopefully, para sabihin na, your old talk, hopefully 104 million jobs in the coming years. The MSMC, MSMEs hold the promise of raising a lot of the Filipinos. I therefore believe that it is now time for Congress to approve a new version of the salary standardization law. Ngayona. And uh, to the teachers, alam mo dito who toil and work tirelessly to educate our young. Uh, kasali na po dito yung hinihingi ninyo. Hindi naman siya doon malaki but it will tide you over during this hard time. A little bit bigger than before. This is intended to increase salaries of national government workers, including teachers and nurses. Nurses, good. I am also asking Congress to pass the remaining packages of my administration's tax reform program and the bills that would further raise excise tax on. Very good. Let us do it. Tobacco and alcohol. Sino na nanigarilyo dito? They should be exterminated from the face of the earth. They are the ones. You know, I, 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 I do not hide my what's wrong with me. I acquired Burgess disease because because I smoke. But uh, I made it a national policy because you know, when I was new mayor, I went around to see the discos and nightclubs. I could hardly see the faces of the people inside. You have to wade into a thick smoke to just recognize one. So that was when I decided. But I was still smoking. But I decided because I knew. I, I, I already had it. It's time. Those. And in national law, para lahat na, that at 12 o'clock, everything closes. I'm not trying to pull a chair here. Mine was that 2 o'clock no on Sadawa. It was 2, then I reduced it to 1. When uh, the, that boxing mayor there became mayor, she reduced it to 6. Walang order, no orders in advance. We said, oh, we, we have ordered already, so you can close, but we have to drink. Itong ngayon, at 12, everything closes down. Nobody works. So, I, I, I think that we should adapt it. Most of the states, in many states, in many countries, we have to stop drinking. And jukebox, they're only good up to eight, nine. Eight magandam. It's, uh, it's there in every corner, store. Blares out noise. 
and the children will go to school and the working class, and you are there with your store. I have prohibited it in Davao, and at 12, as you see, Davao is quiet uh, because uh, everybody is resting already, be it in the memorial park, cemetery, or in, in the comfort of their home. The valuation system has also to be improved, local government units, and rationalized capital income tax. I urge Congress to review and pass the government right-sizing bill to reconfigure the existing Metro Manila-centric bureaucracy, streamline government systems, in order to deliver services without delay and within a short timeline. These reforms would be for not if we cannot avert of a new poor every time a disaster strikes. The Philippine experience has shown that natural disasters and pov are, are poverty creators. That is why we need to hasten the establishment of the Department of Disaster Re Resilience so that uh, this department focus on the natural hazards and climate change. I urge Congress to fast track the passage of the administration of this bill, uh, administration version rather. In 2017, I reminded all of you of the probable consequence of a catastrophic earthquake in Metro Manila and it is surrounding provinces. Since then, I have established a project management office for the earthquake resilience and the greater Manila area to implement two-pronged strategy on earthquake resilience and mitigation efforts. I just heard, it's not in my speech, I just heard that uh, from a psychic that the first crack, when the big one hits, will be right here in the center of this. Yan man ang sabi nila. Philippines is so corrupt, it's so lousy, that if you kill all congressmen, senators, and the president, we will have a new day. So I pray that if the earthquake comes, it comes now, this moment. Kompleto na tayo. May madamay pa tayo doon sa harap. We weathered one damage, damage, damaging effect of climate change this year. The El Nino work wrecked havoc in the agricultural sector and caused water shortage in the greater Metro Manila area. We need to pass bill creating the Department of Water Resources and Water Regulatory Commission. Alamo, the agencies and the, the guys that are handling the, the entire water work system. You have to change it immediately. You know what, there was this three day, no water. I was in Davao. So everybody was complaining. And uh, I was even afraid to come here because what if my girlfriend will not be able to to take a bath, uh, she, will, she will smell like hell. So I said, uh, I'll wait for the water to wash her. Alam mo kung hindi ako nagmura. Kung hindi ko siya nagipapatakot. When I arrived in the morning, there was water. And my girlfriend was fresh. I also call on Congress to pass a law mandating a fire protection modernization program. If you, if you go to Dabao, you find the best. The best of everything. 911, all the cameras, all the screens. 
We need that. If we can find it, alam mo, alam mo, sabi ni, is there, Sunny is here? Secretary Dominguez? Ah, Sunny. Siya man ang magyayabang. Sabi niya, marami tayong pera. Pero pag tanongin namin siya doon sa cabinet meeting, walang pera, walang pera. He joke, no? Ganun rin. Kaya tapon ko sa Central Bank. Every time sabi mo, you know, we discuss projects. We plan. And we submit it to Congress. About its final uh, imprimatur. Hindi magkami, may pera ba tayo dyan sa, wala, magkano? Four billion. That is not the property. No money, no money. Put. Saan pa lang pera natin dito sa bulsa ninyo? Karaming koleksyon natin dito. But Sane says that we can fund. This one we have to answer. Now, I would like to remind, pagbigyan na lang ninyo ako tayo para man ito sa lahat. Eh, lasayas pa nga, ginugutom na kayo. Hindi pala kayo nagmerinda. Alam mo, ever since na-integrate yan, you would notice in your cities and provinces the deterioration of the service itself. Wala nang mga truck, luma na, and would you believe it in Davao City? I'll show it to you. We have in 1934 is Judy Baker fire truck. Maganda pa. So we have to we have to do better than this because there are other cities which are utterly, utterly without the tools to respond to the challenges of fire. We have to come up with something that is really good. I mean, at this age, it would be a shame if you cannot put up a fire in two days, three days. My God. We have to set aside. Sunny, uh, you have the money? Oh, yes. Oh, see? Basta sa maraming tao, mahiya man mag-deny. We have to yan. yan. We have the money, so... Maybe Sunny can give you a figure that we can set aside. Nakakahiya talaga itong ano natin. Ang Davao meron. Davao has a very good 911. Hindi ako nagyayabang. And we have cameras in every corner. So we can solve crimes immediately. And meron kaming 911. What is your emergency? That's, that's the standard. So it's fire, they call the fire department. Uh, sabi ko, 911, yes. Uh, what's your emergency? Uh, I, I, I seem to, lost, uh, to have lost my girlfriend since uh, We know you, Mayor. You go back to Manila, there are plenty left there. Go. <laughs> this will equip the fire. Bureau of Fire Protection with tools to respond to challenges. I further ask Congress to urgently pass the, na ito, the National Land Use Act or NLUA within this year. Pakilang po. So that we can proceed with the new, well, we, we, we can uh, meet the, the demands of the new investors coming in. Ang lupa natin ang problema eh. A science-based national land use plan would serve as basis for the LGUs in crafting respective development plans and help disperse economic activities to the countryside. The dispersion of economic and business activities to Visayas and Mindanao, it's not just a campaign promise, it is an economic imperative and a key to our country's sustainable and equitable development. We will encourage investment that to develop the rural areas and Metro Manila and other mega urban areas. Let me cut here. Total maliit na lang. I would just like to remind everybody, no offense intended to the mayors and governors, to the local government. Pero yung style ninyo na 
it takes about three days, four days for the employees of a certain company, store, or whatever to go back and forth, back and forth. When they go back, you have a new regulation. He gets it, he secures it, and when he goes back, he oh, there's still, you have to follow, uh, you have to get this paper. I will tell you now. In Davao, it's one hour, unless there is a need for ocular inspection. I am directing you publicly. Mayors, mayors, I am directing also the DILJ, Secretary Anyo of the local government, to see to it that this is honored. All clearances, permits, emanating from your office that would need also your approval must be out at the very least within three days. You do not do that. I am directing si Secretary Anyo. Is he here, sir? Nandito ka? Oh, Secretary Anyo, he's the former Chief of Staff. Uh, he's also a military man. I want three days, unless there is an exceptional reason. Three days, para hindi na magpabalik-balik, kasi dyan ang pirahan eh. Pagdating doon, mayroon na manghingin, padotong manghingin. Kaya I said, I Filipinos, if, you, uh, if it is done to you, I'm telling you, slap the guy. Create a scene, create a scandal, because that incident, however little, will reach me. And if they with us, you can be sure. If I do not call you on the idiot, I will go there myself. That is a promise. That is a pledge. Make it a part of my oath of office. Lahat kayo dyan, pati ang ismet, well, under uh, Bilyar, okay na. Pero yung is meant billion dollar, a billion peso. Well, if it's a foreign company, it's a billion dollar thing. Ganon yan, pabalik-balik at ito'y binabayaran. That's why nagpatong. If all uh, monies and revenues due government are collected in good faith, marami tayong pera. I'm telling you as president, marami tayong pera para extra money to uplift the, the, the mass of Filipinos who are suffering. Baski hospital lang. And housing. Well, jobs, it's the economy that runs it. If the economy is good, more jobs. But in the meantime, itong hospitalization, education, the basic things, saka itong relocation. Kaawa talaga. Kung makulikta lang natin, hindi makurap ang pera. Marami tayong pera. Kaya ako, nag kaya ako nagsabi, that's why I, 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 I risk. You know, I will make it public. I was a denying Filipino. I gave it to a group of people. Tapos, nagpabidding sila. Ang nagpabidding nila is to to allow a gambling casino to be erected there inside the Nayong Filipino. Kaya ko nang sabihin, ano, anong kahulugan ng Nayong Filipino kung lagyan mo ng sugalan and without a bidding? You know, nandiyan yung mga general, they are there, chief of staff. Kasi paggaling doon, pumunta ako sa command conference. Pagdating ko sa command conference, may pinasa si Isane, ghost delivery sa AAP hospital. Igaling pa ako doon, when I was facing the military and police, sabi ko, look, I thought I had my back covered by you. If I cannot trust you, you better tell me now. Because 
if you the commanders of the Air Force, Army, pati Albayaldi and the Navy, I will step down now. I am residing. I'll go back to Dabao. You do the explaining to the people why. Ginanong ko talaga. And even of the cabinet meetings, ganun rin. There was this uh, two-year pabalik-balik na yung back and forth, back and forth for tables was sitting on their ass paper. So when they were explaining to me the revised plan, and with so many requirements, clearances from NBI, clear, I, I stood up with the cabinet members, lahat kami. And the cabinet meeting said, stop. That idiotic matrix is not for me. That is intended for the next, maybe the president after the next. Lumabas ako, sabi ko, inyo na yung gobyerno ninyo. Sabi ko, wala ako ay, I'm tired. I'm tired and I'm talagang gusto ko na rin mag-resign. Kaya I'm not happy anymore. So anytime, and the military said, we want to walk. If you want to take over Kodita, go ahead. Do not bring your armors, do not bring your uh, weapons here. Just call me and we'll have coffee. I, I do not believe. I think Marcos and uh, Estrada were correct. That they did not allow the Kasi yung guardia mo, guardia dito pareho yan. Lahat sila dadaan yan sa presidential command. All of them will be assigned. Nag-iikot yan sila. A taste of everything. Hanggang Mindanao. Kaya kilala ko yan sila lahat. Dumaan ng Mindanao. Sabi ko talaga, inyo na. Ayaw ko na. Sabi ko, sige, sinong gusto? Raise your right hands. Ay, ay, Julie... Appointed member of the junta will now make the sona next month. Bahala kayo dyan. We treat them about it. If you think that you can run the country better than the elected one, go ahead. That's not my... is the problem of the Filipino people. Talaga sa kabinet na ano na, Kaya abutan ako ng tupak, magbaba dito ako ngayon, bahala na kaya dyan. I'm going home. One, is, one estimate pegs economic losses at 3.5 billion a day due to traffic congestion in Metro Manila. So meantime, I reiterate my directive, my request, my pleading to the MMDA and all concerned local officials in Metro Manila and other cities to undertake immediate action to ensure the speedy and smooth flow of vehicle traffic. Reclaim all public roads that are being used for private ends. Marami dyan. And again, I ask Secretary Anyo to see to it that this is in force. If there is a mayor or a governor or kung ano kang sino kang demondio ka, suspend mo, Sir Anyo. Give him time, and if he cannot, if he is. If he is not up to it, then papahingayin mo na lang. Suspend mo na. Wala talagang, wala talagang magawa. They just keep on pleasing their own constituents just because they is a constituent, a leader. Ganun kayo eh. The only way to do it, anyway, me, I have no problem. Me, I am an inutile official. Me, I cannot run anymore. Me, after six years, I might lose my head. Wala na ako. I, I, no more challenges in politics. No more mountains to climb. 
I will just do my duty. And uh, most of my cabinet members are actually military men. You know why? Gusto niyo malaman? Do not be embarrassed. Atin-atin na lang ito. Huwag mo na silang pansinin yung mga ano dyan. Parang nag-meeting-meeting lang tayo dito. Yung parang nagpulong-pulong lang. Do not mind them. Kung tingnan kasi ninyo, mahiya kayo. Kasi ganito yan. My penchant for military men. I want to ingratiate myself to them. What? I was elected by the people, not by the military, not by the police. But to, why do I have this, I said, this uh, predisposed to? Kasi utusan sila madali. Kasi pag sinabi mong walang corruption, walang corruption. Kaya lang, ang military, just like any organization, pag ang top dyan, general o ang commander-in-chief, corrupt, kukorrupt yung lahat. Pero kung sabihin mo na matinok, they will follow. So Boracay, I sent Simato. Sabi ko, puntahan mo nga doon. Is John Simato here? Si Roy? Ah, yeah. Ito si Roy, nakilala ko to sa Mindanao. Hindi ko man niya kilala, Mindanao. Na mayor kasi ako 23 years. So all of them passed by Mindanao, kilala ko. Pag inutusan mo, kaagad, and they know that I will not give illegal orders for them to implement. Alam nila abogado ako. Sabi ko, sundin lang ako ninyo. I was surprised when I ordered si Mato to go there to Boracay, Sir Frank. Alam mo ang ginawa niya? The next day, lumabas siya doon sa Daily Mirror. Naglalakad siya doon sa beach. Naka-t-shirt ng blue. At yung mata niya, nandoon sa dalawang kaukisya na nag... nag... God damn it, Samato. Akala ko ba inutusan kita? Yeah, yes, yeah, sir. O oh, bakit ka nagpalakad-lakad yan sa beast? Titignan mo yung nagkabikini na dalawang puti. Sa napadaan lang ako, sir. Kuyo, trabahuin mo yan, ha? And they did it in six months' time. Of course, with the... Uh, I like Simato because he makes his place here with work. That is the way how to do it. I give you until the last week of the year, yung sa September na to do the clean the, the clean the LGOs. Walang mangyari dito. We shall continue to invest in the countryside through agricultural programs that will increase the productivity and income of the small farmers and fisher folk. We shall ensure the full implementa implementation of the rice tarification law, including the rice competitiveness enhancement fund. This will safeguard the livelihood of small farmers through provisions of modern farm equipment and machineries, seeds and credit, and extension services. I also have not forgotten my commitment to uplift the lives of coconut farmers and further develop coconut industry until the urgent, uh, through the urgent utilization of the coconut levy fund. That is 100 million. Kaya ako very careful until now, wala akong nakuha. Look, it is really hard to look for an honest man. I must admit it. Baka ako hindi ko rin kaya. I do not have that. Well, itong coco fund na ito, ito yung naiwan sa, nung kay Marcos na levy fund. This is sacred money. This money was taken out of the pockets of the Filipinos arbitrarily. Wala kang magawa no ni Marcelo. Ito na yan. Kaya itong Coco Levy Fund, kung sabihin mo lang, tamang Supreme Court, 
Hindi mo pwedeng maibigay, sabi mo sino, you can no longer trace the, the truthful owner of the land. Ang plano ko, kung gusto ninyo, you save the money. You invest the money. Mag-abot yan ng mga more than 100 billion. Ilagay na lang ninyo ng ano, trust fund for the government. About so, 5 billion. Ayun na lang ang gasto si ninyo to reserve the money. Rather than do it parang sprinkle na ibigay mo sa mga tao, you cannot, sabi ng Supreme Court, tama sila, you can no longer trace the genealogy of uh, the owner, the original owner. And sometimes it would fail. I will not act on that until I find the man. Wala pa akong nakuha. I have yet, I have yet to look for the man. Hanggang ngayon naghahanap ako, wala akong nakita. Kasi malaki ito. And this will, this, this will you know, uh, if you uh, assign a corrupt idiot there, Kaya gusto, ang gusto ko, o baka nagustuhan rin ninyo, i-deposito ko na lang. Let it remain uh, as a remembrance to the people who lost their, uh, at that time. Tapos yung 5 billion, yun yung to improve the economic, the improvement sa uh, replanting sa uh, coconut. 5 million, that's a big money. Pero kung ibigay mo, let it sprinkler, Walang mo, walang mo yan. Yung magtigabigay, yung kukuha yan. Yung pupunta. That's why itong land bank na ito, pag hindi ito na, you know, you know you're called land bank. But you are now the number one commercial bank in the Philippines. What the heck is happening to you? You are supposed to finance agricultural enterprises and endeavors. Bakit wala? Bakit, why can't you just buy a few wagons or whatever, go to the countryside and ask the people if there are cooperatives, tulungan ninyo to form one. Pag wala, eh, tignan ninyo na maibigay ninyo for replanting of the coconut, uh, to revive the coconut in the Pahiramin ninyo ng pera plus the money nung sabi ko of the coconut levy. That is sacred money. Land banks should go back to land. Why are you mired in so many commercial transactions? Bumalik kayo where you were created for. And that is to help the farmer. Ilang administration na wala. You better decide on that. I will give you until the end of July to give me a plan. Or else, I will ask Congress to reconfigure you, what not. Wala eh, wala kayo. I'm asking now, Congress, pag wala sila, if there is no viable plan for that, for the farmer, and it is just uh, all commercial transaction. Might as well abolish it. And give the money to the congressmen for their development funds. <laughs> oh, mas makatulong ba? Diritso eh. Ayaw ninyo? Uh, ayaw doon nila, Sir Frank. Ayaw mo na lang galawin. I once again urge both houses of Congress to pass a more responsive version of the bill establishing the Coconut Farmers Trust Fund to ensure the accelerated utilization of the Cocoa Levy Fund for the well-being and empowerment of the coconut farmer. We recognize the urgent need to ensure the sustainability, sustainability and availability of resources and the development of alternative ones. In this regard, I trust the secret, uh, Secretary Kosi shall fast track also the development of renewable energy resources and reduce dependence on the traditional energy sources such as coal. Finally, 
is sustaining our gains entails a national security posture capable of defending the country from external and internal security threats. Defense Secretary Lorenzana, together with the gallant men and women in the armed forces, is at the forefront of this fight. We expect support uh, for the initiative uh, legislative initiatives aimed at strengthening defense-related system, such as the proposed National Defense Act and the Uniform Personal Separation Retirement Pension Bill and the revival of the mandatory ROTC grades 11 and 12. Very important. Alam mo, pag maggira-gira, 10 out of 10, hindi marunong hawak ng baril to defend even his father and mother and brothers and sisters. Itong mga bata ngayon, they are drift of uh, the patriotism and the love of country. Balik sila dito. I think a military, military training would be good for everybody. Wala, sige lang. Shabo. Maya, namatay. Duterte, extrajudicial killing. Report to the ICC. Okay. If you can uh, provide me with a good, uh, with a good comfortable uh, cell, heated during winter time, I want to go. And uh, an air condition during hot weather. And a conjugal visits unlimited. Para uh, we can understand each other. We are aware of the fact that there are times in AFP and PNP personnel, while in the performance of their duties, get unjustly sued, providing them with the free legal assistance to help and boost their morale. My fellow citizens, to borrow the words of Churchill, akin to. This is mine. We are now entering a period of consequences. The consequences of what we did and did not do, but should have done during my first half of my term. I assume full responsibility for that. As president, I cannot pass it. They blame to anybody. So it's on me. Though we cannot change the past, we will not squander the future. I will push harder in the pursuit of programs that we have started, but always within the parameters of the law. I will not merely cost along or while away my time during the remaining years of my administration. It ain't my style, but I will not stop until I reach the finish line. Then and only then shall I call it a day. Our goal for the next three years is clear. A comfortable life for everybody, all Filipinos, we have made significant strides and accomplishments and signal milestones as a nation in the past three years. This momentum must continue with greater fervor in the next three years and beyond. I dream of glowing days ahead for every Filipino. I dream of a Philippines better than the one I grew up with. This is my pledge and commitment for just three years, if I can. If I cannot, I'm sorry. But I shall continue to comply with my constitutional duty to serve and protect the Filipino until the last day of my term. God bless the Filipino. God bless the Philippines. Thank you very much.
part of the Senate, the joint session is hereby adjourned. On the part of the House of Representatives, the joint session is hereby adjourned.
Can invite you to my office. Uh, 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 mag 
maghanap lang ako ng not so important uh, tayo tayo lang tayo tayo lang uh, dinner tapos uh, maybe I invite uh, a few makinig lang that will have dinner fellowship uh, I miss uh, alam mo sa totoo lang ma'am I'm a prisoner. So I don't tired of this soul to beauty. It brings your brings you closer to God. Ang music. Ang ganda. Believe ako. I salute you. Uh, I'm an easy bong. Sine- bong. Pasalamat ko. Senator ko. I'll invite about 10. Tapos tayo lang. Mag-play sila, then we'll have dinner. Uh, fellowship lang. Oh, okay, kinala ko nga. Siya ka, wala na. So, yun. Dinner tayo. Few invited friends. Tugtog kayo if you want. Then we'll have, we'll have dancing if you want. But uh, we can spend the night. Okay? Maraming salamat po.